Whether it's with new champs, major reworks, game-changing items, or even full-scale class updates, we're constantly updating and improving League. Mid-season's our chance to make big changes that might otherwise get bumped to preseason. <laughs> this year, we're upgrading three old-school vanguards, making items more rewarding for supports, and giving Riftheld a big, terrifying makeover. We'll talk about her first. Until now, taking Rift Herald hasn't felt worth the risk for many players. We're changing the Bad Beetle's style so beating her grants a reward that actually matters. Rift Herald's new look and attack patterns will make fighting her feel a little more epic, but you'll see the real changes after you've taken her down. Once defeated, the Herald is trapped in a magical relic which grants the wielder a Baron-empowered recall for as long as they hold on to it. Using the relic destroys the item, releasing the Herald from her prison. Once summoned, she'll join your team, sieging the nearest lane and tearing through towers like a horrendous purple wrecking ball. As always, her eye is her weak point, and teams that focus on it will take her out more quickly. Vanguards are tanks that lead the charge for their team, catching enemies out of position so allies can follow up with heavy damage. This mid-season, we're giving three vanguards, Maokai, Sejuani, and Zack, some long-needed kit upgrades so they can start fights and contribute something useful once they're in the fray. We've also got a couple new items that'll give tanks more options in battle. Zack's always been great at engaging team fights from huge distances, but he's traditionally lacked ways to make a splash after the first dive in. To solve this, we're giving the secret weapon some sticky new powers. Now, when Zack uses his Q, stretching strikes, he flings out a gooey hand that sticks to the first struck target for a few seconds. If he then uses a basic attack on a different target, he'll grab hold of them both and slam them together. Aw, now kiss. Zack's new ultimate turns him into a pancake-shaped alien abductor. Instead of bouncing around wildly, he now becomes immune to crowd control and spreads out flat on the ground. Any enemies still inside after a short cast time get trapped into his warm embrace as he bounces away, perfect for kidnapping squishy targets. And finally, the most important change. Zack's new voice now scales with his health. When he's taken a lot of damage and shrinks, he'll sound higher pitched. It's not how much you can lift, it's how good you look! <laughs> Sejuani is a boar-riding warlord that leads her team into battle. We're giving her some new ice-cold powers that'll let her keep control of the battlefield once things get going. Sej's new passive, Frost Armor, makes her immune to slows and improves her defenses. Taking damage will break the armor, but she can rebuild it by roaming around out of combat. Sej's new E, Permafrost, causes her basic attacks to passively apply Frost stacks to stuck enemies. Any of Sedge's nearby melee allies will also apply these stacks with their own basic attacks. When her enemy is fully frosted, Sedge can activate Permafrost to freeze him, then shatter him with an attack or ability for bonus damage. Sedge's new W, Winter's Wrath, lets her make him frosty faster with a few whacks from her mace. Maokai is a very old, very angry nature spirit who's pissed off about the destruction of his homeland. To better capture his personality in-game, He's getting a full voiceover update and two new abilities that make him a terror in the jungle. First, Maokai's saplings now grow and become empowered when thrown into brush. This helps out his jungle clear and lets the twisted tree and control areas of the jungle by booby-trapping the shrubbery. His new ultimate now creates a slow-moving avalanche of roots about the width of a lane. Each root snares the first enemy it catches, giving Maokai a tool for turning around teamfights or for uprooting the lane to make enemies run for cover. So unless you're grabbing pentakills and topping the damage charts, League doesn't do a great job of recognizing your contributions. Supports in particular get less experience and gold than their allies, which prevents them from feeling the impact of the work they do for their team. We want to give support players rewards other than gold so they can power up in new ways. Ancient Coin, Spell Thief's Edge, Relic Shield, and their upgrades now offer quests. For instance, 
Once you earn enough gold with Spell Thief's Edge, it'll begin granting you a move speed bonus whenever you proc its tribute passive. New visual effects also make it more clear who's done what in teamfights. Now, whenever a summoner spell or item is activated, a mist-like tether forms between the caster and the recipient, so everyone knows when you've dropped a sick burn on the enemy. Also, new team-specific death visuals help you keep track of the carnage, and spelled out crowd control effects above champion health bars add a touch more clarity to teamfights. The new items and visual effects give everybody more ways to get recognized for individual achievement in-game, but we also think we can do more to recognize your contribution once the game's ended. That's why we're updating the end-of-game screen to recognize valuable stats like damage mitigated on self, damage to towers, and new vision and crowd control scores that improve as you place key wards and lock down baddies, respectively. We'll keep adding more stats throughout the season, as always, you can catch us in the patch notes to see specifics on the mid-season changes, including stuff we haven't covered here, like updates to tank items. Keep an eye out for other upcoming changes, including our rework of honor and the new 10-band system. Check out this link for more details on this mid-season's changes, 